Hi, welcome back. Um, first, we're going to take a look at a simple approach. We call this simplistic forecasting. Um, this is a good approach if you happen to be lucky and you're working with a firm that is stable and mature and an industry that is in a steady state. Um, we can assume that the current condition is going to continue into the future. We can use a, uh, a very simple um, approach to forecasting. When, uh, what we can do is assume that um, sales growth rate will continue into the future, so we compute some average historic growth rate and use that as a forecast for the future. Net, mo net profit margin will remain the same, so we can use that to forecast future net income. Current asset and liability will increase at the same rate as sales growth because we assume that this is a steady state. Um, and total asset, we can estimate that based on total asset turnover. So again, the relationship between sales and total asset will be constant. Um, and for capital structure, we can assume capital structure is the same. This is a shortcut and um, but this is also useful as a first try or a base case so that when before you add in your um, unique elements or specific information um, to adjust for your own um, input. So this is assuming everything stays the same. What will the future be? So I'm going to use Coca-Cola as an example. Coca-Cola is a company that's been around for a long time. I'm going to download the data from um, Mergent database. Here's the same state uh, database. Uh, Mergent is under M. Use Mergent online. Um, all of you who are students at Salem State, you can use your username and your Salem State password. So we can search for a company. The company I'm looking for is Coca-Cola. And I want to look at company financials. You can choose um, individual um, whether you want to have quarterly report or annual report, I'm going to use annual report. You can look at individual statements or you can look at all the statements all together. Uh, you can change the currency. I'm going to use reported. Um, you can change the scale. Um, I'm, again, I'm going to use as reported. Make sure you press um, refresh. You can also choose to show fit footnotes. So that will be including everything. And you can read this or I can download this into Excel. And here's what I have in Excel. Um, I will enable edit editing. Okay. So each year is separated into each column. And um, it also shows you uh, the note. To minimize space, um, I'm going to delete the columns that do not contain useful data. So I can do a number of things um, just to take a look at what's going on. So one thing that I can do very quickly is to compute the um, uh, a common size statement. So for the um, balance sheet side, I will divide everything by total asset. And this is a trick that you may want to use. We are looking at a lot of information. So to make sure that we're using the right thing, we can highlight total asset so we don't miss that. And this is something that is annoying. Um, the download include, uh, if there's no data, is included as a dash. So that can mess up our formula. I'll show you 
what I mean by that. So um, to compute the common size statement, I divide all the items by total asset. And that worked fine until I copied to one that has no numbers. So there's a way to avoid that, and that is I can check Again, use the if function to check that, make sure that this is a number. And Excel actually has a function called is number. So I can ask if B16 is a number, then I'll go ahead and do the calculation. Comma, otherwise, I'll put a dash here. I forgot a parenthesis. <laughs> okay. So if you include that, then you can simply copy that for the entire section. So this is the common size statement. And we can take a look at um, how variable that is. Uh, with a caveat, this is this include 2000 and 2001, so the two years of COVID, and we will see some interesting items in there. And um, for example, when we look at um, liabilities, we will see that there is a payroll tax under CARES Act. So this is definitely only occurring in 2020 and is unlikely going to um, occur again anytime soon. So again, here's the current portion of deferred payroll tax under CARES Act. So we may, um, particularly when you're doing forecasting um, in the current time period, uh, you have to make a decision. Do we think that we are returning to normal from COVID and therefore we should really forecast using 2019 number and ignore 2020 and 2021? Those are the judgment calls that um, a lot of analysts are um, struggling with. Uh, we can do the same thing for the income statement. Um, so again, we can create, we can do the common size income statement which, um, once again, I'm going to do the test to see if this is a number. If this is a number, then I will divide the item by sales, which happened to be itself. Otherwise, I'll just put a dash there. So here is and we don't want to include number of shares. Okay. So the um, common size income statement uh, what we can see here, again, we can highlight what we are interested in. So net income is obviously an interesting item. So we're going to highlight that. So this is our profit margin. And you can see that this is our uh, net profit margin for the year. Again, that, is, that does not include operating interest. So if we assume that um, we, we are happy, we are, we are fairly confident that Coca-Cola is in a stable industry and the firm is relatively stable, we can try to take a shortcut in, in forecasting this. So what, uh, what we can do then is to compute the growth rate. So we can look at the growth rate for, for sales. So remember that growth rate is new divided by 
O minus 1. So that's the sales growth rate for Coca-Cola. So what we have done is do some really quick um, analysis, um, but we want to um, specify our, when we, when we want to create a model, we want to specify our assumptions. So let's move what we have computed to here. So once you have, you can actually do that. You can highlight the use cut. Do not use copy. If you use copy, it won't work. So let's do cut. We'll put it here. Oops. And So this is historic sales growth rate. Another thing that we want to include is net, um, net profit margin. So once again, use cut. And then we also need to include the most recent sales. So that will be from 2021. So that's our base. And now we need to have the average sales growth rate, which is simply the average of the pass, and then we also will compute average net profit margin. So once again, that's the average over time. And we're going to use this as our simple, simplistic forecast. So for 2022, our forecasted sales revenues will simply be the historic sales times one plus the average sales growth rate. And for our forecasted net income, it will be sales times the average profit margin. Obviously, this is very simplistic, but it's a base. So this is a quick and dirty shortcut to give us an, a very quick estimate of the ballpark of this may be um, a base case or everything goes the same. We can expect to see this. Once you have finished your forecast, um, not just a simplistic forecast, but a detailed forecast, you want to test whether or not um, your forecast is in the ballpark. Um, what you can do is compute the ratios that we had discussed in earlier chapters. Um, will those ratios turn out to be correct? We'll never know. Once again, um, it's not so much whether or not you're right or wrong, but whether or not you are off. And the important thing there is to understand if your forecasts do not match the actual outcome, which of the assumptions um, were off. And that will help you fine tune your forecast or in some cases, um, 
you will re you realize that the your forecasting technique is correct, but the assumptions truly is unpredictable, such as COVID. Um, so remember, you're not doing this once. This is a profession. You keep performing. You keep doing different forecasts um, year after year for a different company. The important thing is to uh, your technique overall is co is correct. Then you'll have a good outcome. Um, but you'll never be uh, on target every single time. So the other thing that we also want to emphasize is that the goal of modeling is to enable us to perform um, analysis that help us um, understand uncertainty. So sensitivity analysis is really important. Your initial forecast is serve as the base case. And then you want to look at what happened to your projected income and, and cash flows if the assumptions um, do not uh, changes from your base case. So growth rate is an important assumption, uh, profit margin is an important assumption, um, and so forth. You can also use the financial statement to look at the firm's um, operating performances. And that may lead to um, a business deciding to change its operating strategy. And we will actually see some examples of that. So uh, the performance statement, this is a iterative process. You use the performance statement to see what the potential outcome will be. And if the outcome is not what you want to see, you cannot simply change the assumptions. That would be wishful thinking. But what you can do is you use that feedback to help you change your strategy. And if you change your strategy, your company's strategy, then of course that will affect your assumption. So you you can that will that is using the performance statement to help you better manage your company. External user, um, including um, banks, will oftentimes use the projected st statements to determine whether or not. Um, they will um, extend your credit or whether or not um, the debt covenant will be maybe violated. Um, and of course, if you're trying to raise money from venture capital firm or private equity firm, they, the first thing they will ask for is a financial performer. As, a financial, as an analyst, if you are trying to decide whether or not um, uh, to value the, a company's stock, um, creating the financial model will also allow you to um, adjust your valuation based on company announcements. So you know, remember the model should be flexible. Um, if a company makes an announcement, you you sh your model should have those as assumptions or can easily be modified to accommodate the new announcements as assumptions. Um, if a company, for example, announced a merger, that's definitely a huge um, change. Um, or even as they announce a change in product line or a change in focus. By creating a flexible model, um, you can you can quickly change um, the assumptions and help you understand what are the financial impact. We'll have a few more examples and um, we'll have two more examples. And one is a financial statement forecast for an existing small business. And for that, you need to download um, this template. And then there's the, the next example and the final example is for a new small business. And there are two templates for that. Uh, in fact, you'll see that after the first try, um, the performance is not up to uh, is below what the owner wants. And so what they end up having to do is to change the strategy. And we'll see how changing the strategy uh, will require you to change the model. Um, and that will enable the company to be to have a better chance of becoming successful. 
I'll see you soon in the next few videos where I'll go over detailed steps on how to complete this template. These are very extensive templates and there will be a, a series of videos walking you through. So you may want to take a break from here, uh, come back fresh and um, this will take a little bit, but this is going to be a really good learning experience. You'll be creating the entire set of financial statements. See you soon.